Hello, this is Hawker Bean, and today we are going to be templating down on r slash templar. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And let's get right into this. There's a lady on a train knitting so aggressively and quickly that her needles clack like some sort of cartoon character and I am super intimidated. She smashed out a shawl in like 35 minutes and now she's aggressively eating a sandwich. I can't. That sandwich is gone. Packet of chips? Gone. Fuel for the knitting machine that she is. She's at it again. Terrifying. Love it. In a lad, bro. Imposter does catwalk and trash bag at New York Fashion Week, and no one notices until security he intervenes. I mean, let's hear it. That's pretty much how high class fashion really is, he says. Open the image in a new tab and wait for that to load. Oh dear. <clears throat> when the author deletes your favorite fanfic, THE SACRED TEXT! <laughs> Gather around, children. I'm about to tell you a story of ye old fandom. Real life fandom, friends. I'm sorry, you've heard this story a thousand times, I know. Long before Disney spot but Star Wars, long before the new trilogy, before even the prequels and themselves predating the remastered versions of the original trilogy, Star Wars experienced its second renaissance in novel form and comic book form, skimmed the pages of the dozens upon dozens of expanded universe novels, and you'll find lots of foundation for the things you see on screen these days. Ben Solo, for sure, has his origins there, but it was also a different era for the fandom. The 90s it saw the transition from fan and culture to online fan and fiction archives. The programming ability and computing power you needed to make a fan fiction archive that the authors could edit themselves did not yet exist in an accessible way. Series-based archives popped up mostly hand curated by webmasters posting text files of chapters and stories that they received from authors via email or Usenet or mailing lists. I spent many of, your, of my teen years on Gossamer, the EX Files Arts Archive, and Fanfix.com, my favorite Star Wars archive. I remember haunting a Babylon 5 archive at the time too, but it's lost to history. I read everything, everything, but by far, my fanfic, my favorite fanfiction of all time was, and I'll always remember this, as simple and as complicated as all that, by Isang Lee. I'm not sure if I said that right. It was epic. Four novels, novels, dozens of chapters. Hundreds and hundreds of pages. It follows Luke Skywalker's decision to finally throw caution to the wind, fall into bed, and in love with Ma RJ. Written in the sweet spot after a character was introduced and explored, but before permission was given to the licensed authors to marry Luke off. It was an amazing indulgence, and it was epic in scale and scope. The great plot twist in one book was... Is that, spoiler alert, when Gary O'Cap after set undied, leaving Luke to look after her orphan daughter, she didn't tell the whole story. You see, Luke and Mara had indulged each other before, had a secret love child, and this brief period of time was erased or minimized in their memories. Slowly the two come to realize, through their haze of lust and passion, 
that something is conspiring to keep them apart, and that this little girl isn't who she seemed. Themes of family and duty and passion and trauma, forced visions and original characters, and sex, sex, sex. It was amazing. Epic, right? Right? Want to read it? You can't. It's impossible. The fanfics.com archive zip the, the text file so the Wayback Machine has an archive them. The GeoCities page went down before the GeoCities archive was published after its closure. An original author's blog, not updated in a decade, features only a few the chapters of a rewrite. An AU of her original epic. But it's not dead. Starting in 1998, my teenage self framed the whole freaking epic. I did one chapter at a time. It took more than a year. I had all saved too on a three and a half inch floppy that got destroyed. Beyond the uh, author's own hard drive somewhere on this green earth, I think this might be the only copy. Every few years, when nostalgia overtakes me, I reread it from front to back. The gender politics are very different. The interpretation of Luke too vastly different from modern fandom's sake. Sometimes I, I wish I could find the author, buy her a dinner, and tell her how important her work was to me. But that's probably impossible. Sometimes I think about re-digitizing it like a different kind of pirate, putting it back into circulation. But that's just a wish, a whimsical dream. The notebook is at least three inches fit thick with front to back printed pages of text. It would take years, certainly it took years to write, but it was part of the floating world of fandom and it fade away. Stuff like this should never fade away. Fanfic art authors, I implore you, never delete your work. You can't know the impact you make. You might think it not good, embarrassing, or irrelevant. It's not. Not to someone. Not to me. Seriously, you have no idea how many fanfics I want to print and find just so I can and keep it in my personal library to read. Some fics are so damn good that they deserve to exist. Find it as a physical copy. Save them, please. All fics matter to someone. Put that book in a safe box or a museum. Is there a fandom museum? We should make one. That belongs in a museum. It's not quite a museum, but there is the Fan Culture Preservation Project, which is a joint venture between the LTW and the Special Collections Department at the University of Iowa Libraries. It's a place to preserve hard copies of fan works and fandom memorabilia. Though it seems likely that we, you know, Caitlin, I'd love to keep a beloved fanfic. Dear fic readers, save it before you lose it. Authors have plenty of reasons to delete their shit, sad as it is, but you still have it. Do what that other person and, and did. Use www.lulu.com like I did for my fave stuff. They're already archived on G-Drive by someone else. Find a way to print it out if you love it so much. Don't rely on digital copies because shit happens. Shit do happen. I remember a fake I like, I, I, and I, I can't find it anywhere. I'm not going to say anything about it though. This is my current printed library of fanfics. This. It, it works best for fanfics up to 20,000 words, but I'm learning basic bookbinding for the longer ones. An experiment of that can be seen on the red side of the picture. This you will protect by all it. Because I love holding them when I read them. And also, what will I read if the power goes down? Exactly. Jabba and Sama. Thought you would like that. Thanks, I do. If so, contact that person who did the gorgeous binding of a sun inlet and use magnificent and manacled. I mean, the book is awesome, and the book binding gives it justice. 
I think that the person who did the binding has made or is making in other bindings. Maybe? I can't remember. Armored Super Heavy might be an interesting read for you. I feel so vindicated in seeing this post and knowing I'm not the only one who has probably the only extent fat copy of Hendrix from the late 90s in binders. I took probably the most ridiculous and difficult out route. Hand book binding. Here's an, an example for of an early ear era fic I found for archival pictures. And some book buying agrees with if everyone wants to join in, in, in the efforts. Rock on, fanfic hamsters. As an archivist, a real one, and a fanfic author, this book speaks to me. Save your stuff, authors. In high school, my best friend and I were known as the book printers. At the time, neither of us had access to the internet beyond school, so we did the only thing that made sense. Printed everything. We would spend as much time as we could after school, usually on Fridays, huddled around the library computers, printing fics we wanted to read. Librarians and, and mine. One of them actually thought it was charming and dressed as her book printers. I owe so much to the authors, the early ones who showed me that it was okay to think of giant worlds and fill them with my favorite characters as well as characters of my own creation. And especially the new authors who have quickly become my found family who have taught me that finding yourself through your writing is perfectly acceptable and losing yourself to an indulgent plotline is fine too. I've learned earned anything in a decade since I offered to pay to school for the gross amount of paper we used. It's that you should never forget your roots and always re Remember, you might just be the one creating fertile grounds for others to put down roots of their own. If you ever have the chance, do it. Print the pages and bind them. The story already holds a special place in your heart. Is it only fair that you hold it close as well? I've been caught a few times by people who have bound my fanfic into print. It never stops being a delight and an honor to see that some stuff I wrote for online consumption meant enough to someone that they want to keep it in their actual home, on their actual bookshelf. No, wait, this has multiple pages? I didn't actually look at it. No, it doesn't. Oh my goodness, medieval Tumblr. <laughs> I freaking hate being a castle guard, dude. The king's coat of arms is freaking stupid, and all the female courtiers laugh at my tabard. Can someone come usurp this guy already? Oh, awesome. Someone sent the king this post, and now I'm getting drawn and quarried for treasonous speech. Real cool and mature is like my employer event post I made on my personal blog. Thanks a billion. Well, he got dethroned by his nephew. Execution avoided. Someone will come along and free me from I'm this ugly at, at soon, I bet. <laughs> you are not alone. Matilda, 1996. Director... Danny DeVito? Hold up, Danny DeVito directed the most influential film of my I childhood? Not only directed, but started it. Took care of Mara Wilson Matilda while her mother was in hospital with cancer. You managed to get an advanced copy of the movie for her to watch before she succumbed to her illness. The Man is a Treasure. I never watched Matilda. Sorry. I don't, I don't even know what it is. I got my heart I broken and I survived. I failed three courses at university and graduated. I got rejected in the very first job I applied for and got promoted yesterday. I went through hard times with my family, but then two years later we laughed our hearts out over lunch. The closest friends and this fight was several times, but I made new friends and loved them with all my heart. I 
did it once, I can do it again. I need this so badly. This, this every day. I need this every day. <sighs> Just give it a minute to load. I'm not afraid of you. No politics here. Just good old fashioned revenge. Hang on. Um, I'm not seeing it. Which guy's phone? That guy's phone in the first panel became more high top Eck in Tony Stark's presence. I am laughing so freaking hard. Oh my god, how did I miss that? OMFG. Tony Stark literally upgraded a flip phone to a smartphone by being within three feet of it. Who have had their old technology closer for his blessing and lo, it is upgraded. The miracle of the flip into the smart, shall we? He told on two of the ages. I love how instead of just calling this a continuity error, the whole fandom decided no. He literally upgraded the phone with his mere presence. Never changed, guys. You know what? Tony Stark has superpower and that is it. He just upgrades tech by being around it by accident. If your tech is out there and you're around Tony Stark, are they getting away or just expect it to be e e in date? Come on. <sighs> These take so long to load sometimes. The three kinds of birds feature names. God special little boy. Hot breasted milf. Great bird with brown head. Walter's fingernail. Handsome fruit eater birds. The handsome fruit eater is a species of birds in the family A. and and I. It is endemic to the coastal mountains of northern Venezuela. Uh, two populations of species live in the northern and mountainous regions, separated by white breasted nuthatch. The white breasted nuthatch is a species of bird in the nuthatch family. It's it's a die. Since today, I don't know. It is a medium sized ice nuthatch, measuring approximately 15 and a half centimeters in length. Love that medium sized nuthatch. Red winged blackbird. The red winged blackbird is a passerine bird of the family Yecteridae, found in most, most of North America and much of Central America. Clark's Nutcracker Clark's Nutcracker, sometimes referred to as Clark's Crow or Woodpecker Crow, is a passerine bird in the family Carvidae native to the mountains of western North America. Wow, they weren't wrong. <laughs> Do you have an, um, an opinion on Cinequil? Mass cheering. <laughs> Love that. Yes, the room is gone. On. Yes, the room is gone. But why is the room gone? Elizabeth. Hide the room. And he never forgave and he never forgot.
Everyone in the car hungry as crap. We got food in the fridge. We don't need anything. Nearby unnamed gay hating restaurant. Makes the air smell like that. <sighs> Everyone in the car started saying we need help with public chicken sandwiches right now. Why do I... It's not worth it. Unless you're saying that it, it is completely worth the lives of, of, of every single gay and trans person that you know. If you're willing to murder every single one of them for a chicken sandwich, then don't go oh, eating at that at restaurant. Do not. Let them go bankrupt. Let them die from their own bigotry. Anyway, we are not immune to propaganda. I was told recently about a school that was shamed and cha it's a change its motto. Its motto. The motto was, I hear, I see, I learn. Nothing in, nothing wrong of... I'm going with that for say. Unfortunately, the motto in Latin was in Latin. And a, a Latin for I hear, I see, I learn is audio video disco. What the frick? That's the best school motto ever. Change it back. You, or you're like the reminder that I learned through suffering can be translated into Latin as Disco Inferno. <gasps> Cute date idea! We go to a botanical garden! You point a flower and I immediately eat it! Wouldn't that be so cute? <sighs> Good heavens! The tales are worth more than gold! Surely not! If you were shipwrecked on a desert island, what would you prefer? A bag of potatoes or a bag of gold? Yes, but a desert island is an Agmapur. Like, and that proves gold is only valuable because we agree it is, right? It's just a dream. But a, but a potato is only worth, is always worth a potato. Anywhere. Add a knob of butter and a pinch of salt, and you've got a meal anywhere. Bury your gold in the ground, and you'll be worried about thieves forever. Bury a potato in due season, you could be looking at a dividend of a thousand percent. Until I locked the ability to eat with full health, I just read around letting people beat me up so I could eat more noodles and hamburgers. Oh, in Yakuza 1. Oh, in Yakuza, I just figured you were are out there living your worst life. <laughs> what? Ah, uh, yes. Because that's how it works, right? Yeah, uh, when when I'm when I I want to eat hamburgers and noodles, I have to oh, get beat up a bit. I want one of those scenes in a dude bro film where a tomboy chick has to wear a dress to go undercover or whatever. But some of the guys really got she walks down the stairs like, "Hey, you need to stop. Go put the car pants back on. You look super uncomfortable and awkward." And right in that, Brutus, you go be the fake prostitute. I'm just imagining a super ripped guy called Brutus being like, Yes! I've always wanted to be the fake prostitute! Now it is my time to shine! This is stupid. How do I look? Um, stop. It's not gonna work. You look super uncomfortable and awkward in that. Put your pants back on. Brutus. You go, oh, be the fake prostitute. Oh, yes. So I got inspired and had to make a comic. Pops by a single tear. Yes. Miss Congen... Miss Congen... And that... 
reality, but with the rock instead of Sandra Bullock. He looks so ready. My time has come. She's beautiful. Let's go, boys. Plot twist, she's his bodyguard. I specifically went back to our blogs to find these. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. He's not the only muscles in a dress. Wow, you're looking absolutely incredible, dude. The dress is so pretty, highlighting your shoulders and waist. Damn. This is amazing. Oh, we're escaping that. I think it was a good, good move for new pets to have a Saturn Hurt image to cover when your pet was built ill or low on HP because it's like, like your new pet has a cough. The clover has finally grown enough for it to munch on again. Absolute decadence. Imagine a kindly giant of unknown species or origin just picking you up and carefully placing you in a pile of chicken nuggets. <gasps> that would be so awesome! Alright. I think this has to be the last one. Having a moment where I think so hard about a fictional character, but that there's no new content and I don't feel like doing anything, so I'm just sitting here vibrating at maximum speed, rotating said character in my mind. Little guy. And that was Tumbling. If you liked this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, Goodbye!